Yo, what's the crack? I'm glad you made it. In today's video, I'm going to show you two finisher blasts for the upper back and delts. As you're about to see, these two combos are going to completely exhaust the muscles that support the scapula and the shoulder joint. The two main movements that are going to be overloaded are shoulder horizontal abduction and shoulder external rotation. Of course, most of these muscles are going to be recruited within big compound lifts that have you pull an object towards you. The best known examples would be vertical pulling exercises like lat pull downs and pull ups, as well as horizontal pulling exercises like rows. Compound heavy hitters like these do a great job at strengthening the muscle groups I previously listed. The only issue I can see with exercises like pull-ups or rows is that trainees would usually terminate a set because the latissimus dorsi or the elbow flexors in the arms can no longer overcome the resistance. Given the relatively bigger size of the lats and the arms, your body would always want to prioritize the contribution of bigger muscle groups over the smaller ones simply because it can recruit more muscle fibers. This means that the primary muscle movers of pulling movements, aka the lats and the arms, might reach muscular failure during a set, but all the muscles in the upper back complex and especially the rear delts most likely have not. In other words, these smaller muscle groups surrounding your scapula and shoulder joint are never fully trained to their full capacity during compound movements. They work really hard for sure, but they do so in rather supporting roles as opposed to as the main leading character if we were to use like a TV show analogy. This is not a bad thing per se, it only means that we could use other exercises where these secondary actors now become the main characters in the show. So, in order to give these a fair opportunity to shine in their own right, we have to get rid of the Hollywood superstars that tend to get all the media attention. You're fired, go! That'd be the lats, the latissimus dorsi, and the elbow flexors. I personally accomplished this through two exercises, reverse flies and face pulls, or variations thereof. Reverse flies are great to overload shoulder horizontal abduction, whereas face pulls strengthen external rotation dynamically. The way I like to include this type of exercises is either within giant sets spread throughout an entire training session or as finishers towards the end of a workout. In today's video, I'll be focusing on the latter. All right, let's have a look at the first finisher, which is the one that I featured in a recent video. Once the bulk of the session is done through a good mix of compound and isolation lifts, I turn to very surgical movements in order to prioritize body parts more specifically. In this case, I start this finisher set with ring face pulls. From an injury reduction point of view, my goal is to strengthen the unsexy and often neglected rotator cuff muscles around the scapula, which are super important to stabilize the shoulder joint during compound lifts. For example, having a strong set of rotator cuff muscles could be the key in keeping good mechanics during a barbell bench press as you approach a muscular failure. So in this regard, I want to look at face pulls as an insurance policy meant to bulletproof my shoulder integrity. From an aesthetics perspective, the heavy contribution of the mid and rear deltoids during face pulls helps me get closer towards the desired, fully developed 3D delts. Alongside heavier compounds performed with different implements at higher intensities, which are usually done earlier in a workout, an isolation lift like a face pull done for higher reps at the end of a session could be seen as another productive step towards cap-looking shoulder city. I personally feel like face pulls are one of those smaller movements that work best within moderate intensity ranges, and this is exactly what I'm demonstrating on the screen right now. Once I get to the point where I cannot longer externally rotate at the shoulder, I simply finish the set of face pulls and grab a resistance band to perform pull aparts, which is another isolation lift that is meant to fully exhaust the already fatigued muscles that are responsible for shoulder horizontal abduction. Given how much energy I've spent in the first part of this nasty superset, I'm feeling very weak during the second bit, a seemingly easy movement that, in theory, could perfectly be used during a warm-up, becomes a very challenging exercise all of a sudden. Every rep contributes to the increasing metabolic buildup in the rear deltoids, 
which are now working extremely hard to meet the demands of the pull-apart. Feeling your rear delts trembling during a set is something that doesn't happen every day, if I may say so. If you've never tried this finisher before, you should give it a go a couple of times to see if you get as much as I get out of it. As for the second finisher, we'd be looking at the complete reversal of order and implements despite the fact that I'm demonstrating the exact same movements. In this case, I'm using an exercise called reverse flies to overload shoulder horizontal abduction. Instead of using bands, now I am using a set of gymnastic rings. This variation of the same anatomical function is a little bit harder than the previous one because it requires more coordination and awareness since it's now your body the one that has to travel across space. As a result, I would encourage lifters to exercise some caution when performing reverse ring flies for the first time. It seems like a fairly easy movement, but it will humble you shortly after. And when it comes to sensations, you are unlikely to feel the metabolic stress I previously described before as I was talking about the band pull-aparts but all the mechanical tension that we create through this movement will be focused on your upper back and rear deltoids. And finally, when it comes to intensity, I usually perform this reverse fly variation within 8 to 15 reps for the most part. An extra tip for the more intermediate viewers, this movement performed at the end of a workout lends itself very well to go beyond muscular failure. Once you can no longer overcome the resistance during the concentric portion of a rep, you can simply perform a regular inverted row, thus engaging the lats, and from the top of the movement, simply flare out your elbows to shift the work from the lats and onto the upper back and rear deltoids as you do the negative. Through this timely assistance of the latissimus dorsi, you might be able to squeeze in a couple of extra eccentric reps that you could not have completed otherwise. Warning. This high effort technique will test how much local discomfort you can actually handle. Your ability to sustain great levels of discomfort is actually a great skill to develop over time. And finally, once you're done with a purely shoulder horizontal abduction movement, I add the external rotation component through face pose with bands. Here I stop counting reps and I simply go to town with these. If you think about it, numbers are simply dependent on how thick the bands you use are. I typically loop together a bunch of them for more resistance, and then I perform banded face pulls until it burns, which I believe it is somewhere around 30 reps here in this video. In any case, the two supersets I just shared with you today are the perfect cherries on top to finish off a workout. Any of these combos will most likely nuke your rear delts and upper back complex into muscular oblivion. These are my two favorite blasts to hit a bunch of small yet important muscles with a greater intent and not only within the context of compound lifts. I really hope you found value in today's video. If you did, check out these two other videos popping up on the screen right now. I think you're gonna like them. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to choose all when you click on the bell to get notified every time a new video goes live. Stay fit, stay strong, help me raise an army of super saiyans all around the world. Peace.